Welcome to Get Paid for Your Pad, the definitive show on Airbnb hosting, featuring the best advice on how to maximize profits from your Airbnb listing, as well as real life experiences from Airbnb hosts all over the world. Welcome. Get paid for your pad. 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 Before learning about a Viva IQ, I used to spend so much time managing my guest communications manually. Now, with Aviva AQ's easy-to-use automated service, my workload has reduced by 80%. Did I mention it's free? Automate your Airbnb messages now at avivaiq.com. Welcome, everyone, to this week's news episode about Airbnb. And today, I am very excited to be talking to Margot, and she is the co-founder of Hostly. So, Margot, welcome. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a it's a pleasure. I'm very excited to be discussing the news with you. And uh, let's get right into it. Let's start with what's been all over the news over the last few days. We can't avoid it. We can't avoid talking about Trump these days, can we? Oh, you know, I I want I was preparing for this, and I thought. I want to talk about something that's not Trump, but then there was actually some good news about Trump and Airbnb. So I hope we get to dive into that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, ab- absolutely. Well, why don't you go ahead? Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know if you saw over just over the last 24 hours, Brian Chesky said on Twitter that if you're able to host refugees in need on Airbnb, you can sign up here and Airbnb is going to provide free housing to refugees and anyone who's caught up in the travel ban or not allowed in the U.S., so I know uh, it, it got a lot of responses on Twitter, a lot of play in the national news and here in the States. Do you, are you seeing it elsewhere too? I, it's, it's always hard for me in my echo verse here in the United <laughs> States to know what's happening outside of Yeah, the US. Yeah, no, I, it's, I think it's all over, it's all over the news. Um, I, you know, it's funny because initially I was a little confused because initially I thought, well, stranded travelers, travelers who are not allowed to go to the U.S., they don't need accommodation in the U.S. because they can't get in. But then I realized we're talking about the the, the airports where because a lot of people already booked flights to the U.S. and mm-hmm. now the airlines aren't letting those people onto the planes. Yes. I've, I've been reading about this. Uh, I know in Amsterdam, for example, the KLM, the Dutch Airlines. I know they've uh, they refused several people because you know they are not allowed to. Uh, I think they're not allowed to to let people uh, board the plane. If mm-hmm. if they're you know if they're not allowed to be uh, in the U.S., so it's a uh, it's a pretty uh, nasty situation for a lot of people. Imagine mm-hmm. you're traveling from like Australia to the U.S. and then you have a stopover in Berlin or something. Well, I guess Australia is not uh, one of those countries, but uh, okay. So let's try. Let's say you're traveling from Iran to yeah, and you're the like U.S. A doctor. Yeah, and then exactly. and then you have a stopover yeah. in Berlin, and suddenly right. it's like, oh, excuse, sorry, sir, uh, you're not allowed to board plane uh, because you're not allowed to travel to the U.S. And I'm sure a lot of these people have family, right, in the in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Yes, right? and so well, yeah, and, and actually there was there was some confusion too because yesterday, um, and I happen to know this because my dad is flying to, to town soon. Delta, which is the sister company to KLM, had a huge shutdown of their electronic system. For two and a half hours, and they grounded hundreds of flights. So, in the midst of this immigration challenge in the United States that a lot of people were facing with, like the security in the airports, like they're not even all together on exactly what's going to happen. There was also this huge outage with one of the airlines. So, um, you know, there's protesters at the airport. There are all these extra security agents at the airport. There are lawyers at the airports. Now there are travelers being stranded at the airports. And and I'm sure all these people are getting stuck and not having a place to stay. So it is really cool that Airbnb is putting it out there that they're happy to help. I'm sure they're, they're going to help a lot of folks. Yeah, absolutely. I also saw that Canada is offering uh, anyone who is getting stuck, they, they're offering a place to live even, I think. I think that I saw something about <laughs> the the president or the, the 
you know, I don't, is it the president in Canada or the prime minister, the prime right? Minister, right? Right. Premise, prime minister. That's, that's the right word. Um, offer to, to, to host uh, all the people that are not allowed to go to the U S now, which yep. kind of reinforces the idea that Canadians are very friendly, um, which surprisingly, <laughs> exactly. surprisingly Canada is the one country that always give me trouble when I, when I try to get in, I, oh, they, really? always, yeah, they always take me uh, to a different room and ask me all these questions They go through my, they, last time they even went through my phone, they went through my WhatsApp messages. And so it's interesting oh, wow. their, 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 their immigration, the border immigration is actually very strict. Hmm. Um, but, uh, that's a different uh, topic. Um, but Airbnb, so people can register mm -hmm. with Airbnb to offer free housing. You can volunteer your home on mm -hmm. Airbnb and also, also on, on lots of, uh, articles across the web so it, it won't be hard to uh to find it yep. um and and airbnb is even gonna subsidize people if the, if there's not any free housing available mm -hmm. that's so right. yeah. yeah so that's and, you know it's very cool yeah and there you know it's kind of fun to watch it on twitter too because you see some leaders from other big companies and and financing institutions actually volunteer like this guy who i follow on Twitter named Jason Lemkin, who's really big in the SaaS world, um, volunteered to offer to have to host folks at his home. Um, so he basically is a new registrant, a new Airbnb host, um, and he's offering to join in because of this political stance that Airbnb is taking. So it's, it's interesting to watch it both in the news and then also from person to person, especially on Twitter, which is a very strange place. But um, it, it, it's all good, I think. <laughs> it's all in the best, best spirit. So that's good. Absolutely. Well, my, my yeah. house is already... Uh, fully booked pretty much the whole month oh um, really so i can't really host anyone can you can you host someone i'm hope hosting people right now um actually another company that was part of a, an accelerator program that we were in with hostfully uh two is guys from the uk and uh, kentucky um are staying in my apartment now so i can't host anybody else either <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> pull up yeah Awesome. Well, it's good to it's good to see the the reaction of lots of uh, companies and also governments to uh, you know to this kind of crazy rule yeah. that uh, the Trump has uh, implemented. I although I have to say it seemed that there's a judge I think who decided that uh, he wasn't allowed to to implement this rule in the first place. Yeah, there's there are a few judges. I think it was Judge Donnelly in Brooklyn that said that, and then. I think it was in Washington Dulles Airport in Texas where the head of the TSA, which is the Transportation Security Authority, just rejected the executive order from Trump and basically said, I believe it's unconstitutional and I'm not going to uphold it. So there's just, I mean, it must be so crazy in that part of the world right now where you have a lot of people who are trying to decide what the right thing is to do and it's not very clear. Um, so expect to see a lot more chaos at airports and all my friends who've been traveling over the last few days here in and out of San Francisco have said that there are huge crowds there. So it's, it's just something that you should plan for if you are traveling yeah. or hosting. Yeah. And what's the purpose of this measure? Cause I, I just, I just can't see any good reason because apparently it's, it's to prevent terrorism, but I yeah. mean, having these crazy rules, you're just creating more enemies. Yeah, well, right. and they did a, yeah, and I mean, if you look, there's this great um, graphic, it's like a chart that I looked at online, um, where it showed the number of terrorist attacks in the United States that were due to immigrants from these countries, and all the refugees that are coming from um, Iran, and Iraq, and Syria, and Yemen, Libya, these countries that are on the, the ban list, um, they go through extensive one to two year processes just to get approved to come into the United States. And so it seems like a misguided attempt to prevent terrorists from coming here. Um, and really what I think Trump is trying to do is um, he's trying to make people who feel that that there is a terrorist threat better, like that, that, that are Americans. He's trying to make them feel better. Um, and I, I think that he's taking really big, broad stroke measures to do so because he wants it to be very dramatic. And you know, it's, if you look at the data, it, it doesn't look like it's going to pan out very well. Um, but I'm speechless. I mean, I I, <laughs> I don't want to get into it too much because it's very upsetting to me personally. But I think that there are a lot of people in the United States who feel a lot of fear about others coming into this country. Um, but it's certainly not me and not anyone in my family. And there are a lot of other people that are wanting to welcome refugees and have them here and uh, provide a safe haven for those who are in need. So we'll see what happens. All right. Well, let's move on to a more positive uh, subject, 
which is about Airbnb finally reaching profitability. And, that, and that's a pretty big deal, I think, because, you know, if you look at uh, some other big startups like Uber, for example, Uber mm-hmm. lost $3 billion last year, mm-hmm. which, is, which is pretty insane to me. If you think about, the, you know, is it, it's valued at $60 billion, but they lost $3 billion. It kind of makes me think of the boom in the at the end of the the 20th century when when everybody was investing yes. in, in online companies and yeah. nobody, nobody was looking at how much money these companies were making they just lo- they were just looking at how many users do you have right yeah, yeah and and all these companies uh, after the the bust all these companies well not all of them but a lot of them went 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 bankrupt and and mm-hmm. the people lost a ton of money and that kind of reminds me uh, of of that when I when I see these numbers, but Airbnb now has actually made a profit, and it also the article also states that they have nearly all of the three billion dollars uh, in funding that they that they raised, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is seems like they're in a pretty uh, pretty favorable position. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that has to do with with uh, the right kind of growth, right? I mean, if you think about the um, operating model of Uber versus Airbnb, I mean Uber does require probably a more expensive approach to new markets where I think Airbnb has been able to ride on, you know, home sharing being a kind of natural and already existing thing that happens for travelers, right? I mean, even before Airbnb, there were there was couch surfing and before that there was just staying with friends of friends, right? So I think that um, in terms of like how much money it takes for them to enter new markets, it's a little bit cheaper and they've been able to manage that really, really nicely. And I think for Airbnb hosts who are the listeners of your podcast, this is a really good news because you have the industry leader um, kind of putting it out there in the markets that they're going to be around for a while, that they're going to be able to invest in growth in a sustainable way, and that all the, the time and energy that their customers have put into coming onto the platform will be put to good use in the long run. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think this is great news for Airbnb hosts everywhere. Yeah, I think so too. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think also one of the reasons that uh, Uber is losing so much money is because they're fighting a, a very fierce war with uh, with Lyft. You know, mm-hmm. where, they're, where they're both like they're, they keep lowering the, the cost and they keep offering more incentives, etc. Whereas, mm-hmm. you know, Airbnb, I mean, it it has competitors, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, HomeAway existed before Airbnb and there's, there's a bunch of other ones, but mm-hmm. it doesn't really have like a very close competitor, I'd say. I mean, there's not really a, you know, a, a second Airbnb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, totally agree with that. Yeah, I mean that's one that's one of the things that all these finance articles are saying too is that there's Homeaway is large, but the pricing model of Homeaway is so different that they can't really compete with Airbnb, right? I think that's the primary yeah. reason. Don't you agree? I, I think, yeah, I think it's also the design. I mean, I remember yeah. when I first started, started hosting, I looked at all these websites, and I mean, I looked at Homeaway, and I just I just felt like. Eh, this looks old and I don't know. It just didn't appeal to me at all. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, Airbnb, it, the design and the, the user-friendly interface and the fact that you don't have to pay to sign up, I think HomeAway, they, they charge mm-hmm. the listings. Um, and okay. it just I, I just felt like, okay, this is Airbnb seems like a platform that, you know, is innovative and it's going gonna, it's gonna to grow in the future and it's going to become like a major player. Whereas, it's, mm-hmm. you know, Homeway is kind of like the, it's kind of like the Greg's list of, of the, how do you call that? Uh, the advertisement. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Although I would say that Craig's list is like not even as bad as Homeway in some ways because Homeway had, has a very uh, kind of a strict way that you need to interact with the with the booking site, you know what I mean? And like, at least Craigslist, even it's kind of crappy, but it's free, right? So yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, that's that's true. true. But with HomeAway, like the user experience is very specific for like the old business where you, you're right, you pay a listing fee and then maybe you get some uh, money on the bookings. Maybe you pay HomeAway some money on the bookings, maybe you don't. You know, um, HomeAway promised to the street, I believe last year, that they were going to transition almost all their properties off of the listing fee and onto the price per stay. Um, but, uh, I don't think, I mean, who knows how the, how they're doing with that, but that's right. a really big, big milestone that they're shooting for. They're going to definitely slip a little bit in the market. There's a lot of customers on the transition there. We'll see. Yeah, I think so too. And, um, well, the, the article also mentions, or it shows a graph of where global Airbnb users are switching from. And mm-hmm. w- one thing in particular that I found interesting is that I mean everybody will understand that people are switching from hotels and bread and breakfast and other type of vacation rental listings, but 
one thing that's really interesting is that people are also switching, like 31% are switching from friends and family. Hmm. And that's interesting because that adds to the to the total market, to the total pie. Right? Yes. And, you know, one thing I've noticed, because I've, I've looked a lot at the relationship between Airbnb and, you know, the, the number of hotel stays that are being booked in different cities, because I'm always mm -hmm. curious to see if Airbnb really hurts the hotel industry. And mm -hmm. it seems, it seems like, you know, cause Airbnb is being the scapegoat for all these, all these different things like rising real estate prices, rents, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the hotel, uh, hotels are, uh, are complaining, but it seems like if you look at the number of hotel stays, it seems like they're not really doing that much damage to the hotel. So I always felt like, okay, maybe they're creating extra demand. Maybe there mm -hmm. are people that are traveling and you're know, staying at Airbnbs. They, otherwise they would have stayed at home or they would have stayed with, with their friends and family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I found that quite interesting. Yeah. Don't you think it's a little bit of both? Like, I think they're stealing a little bit of market share from hotels, but I agree with you that they are expanding the market completely. I, we did a little mini study last year in San Francisco and actually looked at the number of nights in hotels over the years since Airbnb has been here. And yeah, there is a decline in the number of hotel nights over, over time. It was over the last five years. But in that same time, Airbnb grew a lot more than that. So it, you're right. The demand's got to be coming from somewhere. <laughs> so right. it's, it's not all coming from hotels. Right. Yeah, I think it was like another five to 10% actually. So it was, it was pretty significant. Mm -hmm. Right. Hosts. Does it feel like you're spending way too much time responding to questions from your Airbnb guests? Is the fear of a possible bad review keeping you up at night? I recently learned about a really helpful service called Aviva IQ. With Aviva IQ, my workload and worries have reduced dramatically. All I had to do was link my Airbnb listing to Aviva IQ, create my messages and schedule their delivery times. That's it. I can't believe how easy it was to set up. Now I can sit back, relax, knowing that my guests receive all the important details on time, every time. Everybody sleeps better. Check them out at www.avivaiq.com. Let's move on to the next SEPI Act, which, is, right. which is actually not uh, about Airbnb. It's no. ab about Traveling Spoon. Yes. Well, there's there's three companies that I just wanted to tell everyone about that are exciting. Um, and I think as Airbnb hosts, you'll find interesting. These are all companies that are run by women who are in travel, which is pretty unusual. And being a CEO myself in travel, I always am looking to connect with other women. So I wanted to highlight these three companies because they have a lot to do with your audience. Um, so Traveling Spoon is, it's kind of like Airbnb for home cooked dinners. And so you can travel to different places in the world. And you can learn to cook with someone who is a native cooker in that place. So they're not, these are not chefs. These are people who um, basically do a cooking class in their home. So if you're going to go to India, and I mean, I actually did this. I, I didn't do it with Traveling Spoon, but I went to India. I stayed with my friend in uh, New Delhi, and I, I, I learned to cook with her cook because it was such a fascinating part of my travel experience. So, so my friend Steph and her co-founder Ashi, um, are the, the the leaders of Traveling Spoon. And last year, they raised almost a million dollars in funding. Um, I, I have an article here from, from TechCrunch. Um, and, and they basically are trying to bring this kind of authentic travel to the masses. And I think uh, if you're an Airbnb host and you love to host guests and help them cook um, and learn to cook your native foods, you should check out Traveling Spoon. Maybe you can make a little bit more money doing so. Yeah, I think it's a really cool complementary uh, service that you can uh, start uh, on top of your Airbnb listing. I mean, you can even combine it, right? You yep. can even market your, you know, your your class, your cooking class, or your dinner to your Airbnb guests. Mm -hmm. And um, I've known about. I think it's this is very similar to Eat With and Feastly, yeah, uh, which I've known about for a while. And I think it's awesome. It's a great way for people to to connect with people in their local communities. And I think most people who do this probably don't do it for the money. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a lot of people who there's a lot of people who are lonely. You know, there's mm -hmm. firstly old people. They mm -hmm. they have a lot of time. They're lonely. And you know what's what's cooler than you know having having somebody who's usually spent the spent the evening by themselves watching TV or something instead cooking an awesome dinner and inviting you know people from uh, all over the world to uh, to come eat with them and making a little side uh, income on the, as well. I mean, it's, yeah, it's awesome. 
Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's good all around. I could totally see myself as being a customer and a host. Yeah. Um, with traveling spoon, I have two little kids, so right now it's my time is pretty tight. But <laughs> if I did not, and I had more time in my hands, I could totally see myself using this. Absolutely, um, I'm. Uh, I'm yeah. actually looking at. Uh, unfortunately, I'm in Colombia right now. Unfortunately, they're not in Colombia yet. Otherwise, I, I would have uh, loved to try oh, it out. Cool. Yeah, I think they're in India, and I, I think in Thailand, maybe some of the kind of big. Big yeah. markets for travel. Yeah, they're actually in, in quite a lot of countries. They're in, in, in China, they're in Hong Kong, Greece, Mexico, okay. Taiwan, Morocco, Nepal, Philippines, Vietnam, uh, mostly wow. Asia, it seems. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. it's a it's a it's maybe an Asian startup. I don't know. No, it's not. I mean, Ashi is Indian, but I think she's Indian American. And um, I know they started it in India because it was this idea that they had in business school they, they, they got their original idea in India. So I think they started there and then they quickly expanded to Southeast Asia because it was easy for them to kind of source in bunches. So they actually go every, every cook that comes on board, there's like someone from traveling spoon goes and meets them and like checks out the place. So they do a lot of vetting to make sure that the experience is really good for travelers, right. um, which is one of the reasons why I feel like I can recommend it so wholeheartedly because they do a lot of work to, to make sure that that's a good experience. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And Southeast Asia is also, you know, one of the most interesting culinary cultures, I think, uh, you know, on the planet. I, I personally love going to Asia and the food is always amazing. It's such a wide variety and they mm -hmm. use all these like different spices and, you know, also the style of eating is, is very cool, right? Where you have yeah. like lots of little dishes and everyone just takes, you know, a little bit from little bit. What, whatever they want. It's much yeah. more interesting than, you know, for example, in Holland, it's just, uh, basically a piece of meat and a potato and, and, a <laughs> and some vegetables. <laughs> and, and, true. You know, I didn't think about that. <laughs> which, you know, it can be, can be pretty good too. But, yeah. um, but I really love the, the sort of the sharing style uh, dinners mm -hmm. that they have in, in Asian countries. Yeah, that's true. I, I, it, I was just chuckling too, because I was, I've been in Hawaii for this accelerator program for hostfully um, over the last few months. And I've eaten tons of Japanese food and, um, just what you descri were describing, we, I just had a dinner like that, which was a very modestly priced dinner. I think it was like $22 per person, um, US, and it included just tons of little dishes and beer. And it was just this lovely meal where everybody shares and the portions, uh, not the portions, but the, the dishes are so tiny. It comes and you kind of think, is this going to be enough food for everybody? But then at the end, you're completely full and satisfied. It's a very different right. way of eating than, than in Europe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. exactly. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Well, to end this podcast episode, I actually have yeah. some personal news to share with regards to Airbnb. So as, as many of you probably know, I'm selling my house in Amsterdam because Airbnb is kind of forcing me to do so with the 60 days maximum, um, maximum that they've uh, installed on the website. I have a counter on my listing now and it literally says, uh, you've, you've, uh, you've booked for 43 days so far this mm -hmm. year. So you have like 17 days left. So I need to get out and, uh, and that's why I've the last few couple of weeks i've been on a on a trip on a tour to find different places to invest in different countries where airbnb is is allowed because i don't want to worry about regulations and you know i really want to invest in something where i can just do airbnb and no one's gonna bother me about it so i've uh, i've actually yesterday made my first investment or committed to making my first investment here in cali in colombia um, which is congratulations. Thank you. Which is really <laughs> exciting. Really exciting. Cali is the third uh, biggest city in Colombia. And I found an amazing spot in, in one of the best neighborhoods. And, uh, it's, it's a two bedroom, two bathroom penthouse. And the great thing is that it has a, a rooftop that is part of the penthouse. And what's great about this apartment is that it's located in a building that's owned by a real estate company. These are people from Medellin that I've actually met a couple of years ago. And uh, they're going to completely remodel the whole building, it consists of four units. And because they own the whole building and they're selling the units to people who want to invest in short stay apartments, 
I'm not going to have any problems with building managers and or anything like homeowners associations and stuff like that. Because in Colombia, most of the buildings, they don't allow short stay rentals. And so this is really a perfect uh, opportunity for me, I think. Uh, it's also, I think, the only penthouse that's going to be on Airbnb because I looked. And there's very little luxury accommodation uh, in the in the city here. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I arrived uh, a few days ago, and I, I really love the atmosphere here. The people are super friendly. The climate is awesome. It's uh, it's about uh, around 85 degrees uh, pretty much every single day of the year, and um, is there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of fun to be had. There's this, this Cali is the capital of salsa, so this would be a great place for me to learn uh, to finally polish up my salsa skills. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, very, I'm very, I'm very excited. Person. Yeah, those salsa skills are very important. I'm not joking, actually. <laughs> I, they, they come in handy anywhere you go. I, I was going to ask you, though, when you when you came um, in, did you have the intention of, like, did you look on Airbnb and kind of look at the market and decide, I'm going to find a luxury place? Or did you kind of come on this opportunistically? What was your plan with that? Well, I knew about these properties because I, I already saw a brochure. And, uh, I mean, the reason that... I really think it's good investment is because I did some research on, on the Airbnb website and mm -hmm. I, I just noticed that, uh, and this is very typical for South America, you know, most accommodation that you find in South America is typically, it's, it's usually not luxury types, usually not high end. Um, you know, some of some other places, uh, people have caught up because I mean, Americans and European Europeans, they typically want to stay in, in, in really nice looking places, right? In really nice looking apartments. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, mm -hmm. and so I think that sort of that trend hasn't caught on here yet. Mm, right? People, people aren't, uh, you know, people aren't marketing their places, um, that in a, way. Kind of a high end way. Yeah. Exactly. But there's, okay. I mean, there's a fair amount of, of foreigners visiting the city. There's a lot to do. Uh, this is one of the best places in the world to do a parasailing, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I think that, you know, having a very, like a very luxury apartment, because the, the way they're going to do the remodeling, it's, it's going to look really nice. I've seen apartments uh, that they've done in the past. Because mm -hmm. I've actually helped this company uh, to optimize their listings on Airbnbs, and and I've created a video for them of, of all their apartments in Medellin. So I know I know exactly what those apartments looks like. Mm -hmm. So I think being the uh, one of the few people who actually has that high end accommodation, and you mm -hmm. know having a jacuzzi on on a rooftop with a with a view over the city is is mm -hmm. pretty pretty unique. So I think that's going to be a big uh, unique selling point for me. Yeah, and especially if you're at the high end of the market, like you can. And, and you're, you're kind of stand out. There could honestly be 10 others like you, but you still probably have enough, um, enough of a differentiation point that you could like to get creative with how you get your initial customers. Like you could talk to multinational corporations that have offices there where people are traveling or other companies that want to hold like corporate kind of eventy things. You know what I mean? Where you could have a party or something, like a small party or something like that hosted in your place. So there's lots mm -hmm. of great ways to, to get at that not the traditional, you know, family traveling from another country, but more like the business traveler stay, I think that are, that really fit well with a yeah. luxury place. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, cool. another, another cool thing is that uh, I'm going to have the bedrooms, they're going to remove some walls and they're mm -hmm. going to make the bedrooms bigger because in South America in general, the, the bedrooms are quite small because typically the families are quite large and they want to mm -hmm. you know, have a lot of rooms for, to, to have, have every, so everyone has a room, but, oh, the, but, it, yeah. but a tourist <laughs> prefers to have a, a, a larger bedroom, right? So yep. the apartments mm -hmm. is, is the bedrooms are going to be expanded. So it's really mm -hmm. going to be, uh, you know, marketed uh, for perfectly for visiting tourists, especially from mm -hmm. uh, US and Europe. You know, and then the price it's, I'm paying less than $150,000 for a two yeah. bedroom, two bathroom penthouse with roof stairs. In the best in the best area of the city, there's literally like forty or fifty restaurants in a free block radius. It's it's the you know it's it's really the sort of the uh, the Beverly Hills of Cali, so to speak. Um, yeah, that's great. So yeah, I'm very excited. And uh, by the way, if you're interested in in investing in Airbnb, I'm I'm writing 
all my experiences down in a in a book that I'm going to publish later this year. But uh, if you if you want to have updates about my journey, I also share videos on on my Facebook and uh, YouTube channel, and mm-hmm. you can also sign up for for updates on getpaidforyourpet.com slash Airbnb dash investing. There you can leave your email, and then I'm gonna send out emails of and with updates on what's going on and all the investments that I've made and pictures and information. So. Mm-hmm. There's a for those who are interested, they can check that out. Mm-hmm. Cool, awesome. So, Marco, thank you very much for joining today. It's been a, a pleasure to discuss the news with you. Thank you. It's really nice to talk to you too, and congratulations again on your place. It's really exciting. I hope I get a chance to check it out one day. Yeah, well, you're very welcome. The other cool thing is that when I'm actually staying there myself, um, because it has two bedrooms, I can either invite friends or I can host one of the rooms. Mm -hmm. I can put one of the rooms on Airbnb, which will be pretty cool as well. Exactly. That sounds great. All right, Margot. Thanks for joining and thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, hopefully see you again next week. Get paid for your pet. 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 Get paid for your pet.